Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I'm going to be mastering and reviewing the PP2000 PDW in Battlefield 4. I am still on my road to mastering all the weapons in this game, and this signifies my completion of mastering all PDWs. Now we've just got a carbine, sniper rifles, machine guns, and DMRs. Now the PP2000 is a funny little PDW. It doesn't do very much damage per second. Its maximum damage is 24, meaning you're still going to need a 5 shot kill in close quarters to down your opponent, and your maximum rate to fire 650 rounds per minute so your damage output is very low however this also means that your recoil in general is going to be on the lower side and you also have a very large magazine capacity of 45 this is going to allow you to take down potentially three targets with one magazine uh, i would say four targets is really pushing it unless you just happen to get lucky and like most pdws this also has great hip fire potential in close quarters while you're on the move while you're standing still it's going to be very accurate you'll see i'm running a laser in a lot of the clips here which improves your hipfire accuracy and I ended up removing it because the hipfire accuracy was good enough for the most part that I didn't really need it for extreme close quarters and if I'm ever engaging somebody at medium range I'm almost always aiming down sight anyway. I ran with two different configurations for this weapon. One with a laser sight and flash hider definitely giving me a lot more hipfire potential allowing me to be a little bit quicker not relying on stealth so much but more about uh, speed and killing my targets as fast as possible with my hipfire accuracy in close quarters. The other way I ran this weapon was without the laser sight and putting a suppressor as the barrel attachment on there instead. This allowed me to maintain my stealth approach in close quarters and it also allowed me to take out multiple targets before they realized what direction I was coming from. I liked both setups, they both have their pros and cons. The suppressor really really reduces that muzzle velocity so it makes engaging medium range targets even more difficult with this weapon, something that you don't generally want to have to engage but you're often forced to in many situations in this game because you can't always control your engagements so the suppressor does limit you to mostly extremely close quarters but it does keep you off that mini map without the suppressor i felt a little bit more free but definitely enemies approaching me quickly which isn't always a bad thing with this magazine capacity if you take down somebody's teammate and they see you on that mini map and come around the corner expecting you to be reloading with this weapon oftentimes you've got plenty of ammo left over so you can take them out no problem and you can almost use it as a little bit of a bait gun now when it comes down to it using this gun on a serious level just isn't really viable in a lot of servers i kept running into the same players running aeks and every time I'd run into them I could even get the first shot off in an engagement but they would get the last shot and they would finish me off kill me just because the damage output on this weapon can't compete with some of the heavy hitters in this game and that's just the fact of the matter when you're running around for fun or you're planning on engaging a bunch of targets that aren't necessarily worried about you as their number one threat then this can definitely be a fun little gun because it does have a lot of damage potential in one magazine but there isn't a whole lot more going for this weapon it also has an unfortunately long reload time and I know I complain about reload times a lot and it's not so much that the length of it is just like going to kill this gun overall but the length of the reload compared to other weapons in the game especially weapons that have uh, more complex reloads than this doesn't make a whole lot of sense so I would just like to see guns balanced a little bit better more accordingly and give PDWs whatever advantage they can take because they're designed for close range and let's be honest Battlefield 4 is a medium to long range game now I normally opt for the Cobra or Coyote site but I decided to use the classic reflex site on here and it got me thinking a little bit about how they've changed up the targeting reticle in Battlefield 4. They've basically given you complete customization over the size of the reticle in the center of your screen and also the color of it. So I've made mine pink because it kind of stands out against any background no matter what the situation unless for some reason you're looking at a pink neon sign or something like that. Uh, so I like that color of it and it works but something that occurred to me and something that I actually like about the way that Hardline does their optics is that the optics are actually true to the real life counterparts. For example, this is the Trijicon made uh, red dot or reflex sight. I shouldn't call it a red dot because the dot in real life is amber. It's pretty much yellow for the most part. And the one in Hardline uses the chevron reticle, the little triangle pointing at the top center. And that is one of the options you can get the sight in. But I don't believe it actually comes in a red dot option. 
So it would be kind of cool to have some of the authenticity come back to the optics and also the minute of angle, which is the size of your dot. In Battlefield 4, you can totally customize the size of that dot. You can make it as small as you want. You can make it pretty freaking large if you want. And that's going to determine how quickly you can locate that dot versus how accurate that dot is going to be. If it's a very small dot, you can aim for somebody's eye if you want. If it's a large dot, you're going to find it quickly. And real life optics have those same characteristics and that's something you have to take into consideration when choosing your optic for your weapon. And I would love to see that kind of return to Battlefield, especially considering that Hardline has it, but for the most part, Hardline is definitely not as serious of a military sim game as Battlefield 4 is trying to be. So it would be cool to bring back that sim aspect a little bit. Again, Hardline has a green dot sight as well, which is again true to the real life counterpart. So it would be cool to have dot sizes and dot colors match up with the real life optics, and that would kind of factor into which one you wanted. You could also play around with the brightness of the reticle in the center and try and make that realistic as well. For example, the coyote sight in this game, the real life counterpart, I've personally found to wash out and be very hard to locate on a bright day. So that could be a characteristic in game. And that way the coyote sight wouldn't be the obvious choice all the time. And you could actually factor in some of those realistic characteristics. Anyway, that was kind of a ramble about optics that has nothing to do with the PP2000, but it was just something I happened to be thinking about while making this video. But back to the actual PP2000, if you love this gun and you actually want to get 500 kills with it, I would recommend Team Deathmatch for the fastest way possible. And if you want to play some objectives and probably get a bit more points in the process, then you can play some of the Conquest maps. Just remember to try and keep it up close and personal whenever possible. Don't stop or try and engage people at further ranges unless you're almost certain you can get the kill. Because as soon as somebody starts shooting back at you, this is the last gun you want to have at anything beyond close range. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for the PP2000 Mastery and Review. As always, I get the stats from Simthic.com. Let me know in the comments which weapon you would like me to master next. There is a list of them in the video description, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.